Inventory's down, but it's gonna come back, I think. So sellers don't get too excited and buyers don't worry. Here's an unpopular opinion. Interest rates are going to hit the pause button. They aren't going to go down anymore. They're going to stay in this range. Inflation is not down. You and I know this because we go to the grocery store and we see how little our dollar buys, but somehow the Fed has found some stats and manipulated the data and given them some cover to do an absurd 50 basis point cut. They aren't going to be able to cut anymore, but more on that later. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also gonna do a quick interest rate update and we're gonna talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker, turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to the real estate market, then know I am here to help. Want to save thousands, possibly tens of thousands of dollars on your next phone purchase? right then reach out let's talk about the purchase power plan let's jump into the single family market stats inventory is down but it's only a small blip as it was because of the columbus day weekend we now have 5794 single family homes on the market this is a three percent more homes on the market than just 28 days ago we essentially should have three more weeks of peak inventory levels of 2024 until we start seeing that fall pull back Buyers, there are some amazing opportunities out there. You just need to know where to look for them. You can really see the extent of the pullback in the year over year inventory levels. We now have 1,140 more houses on the market we compared to the same week last year. This is down from 1,315 units last week. So big drop. And we now have 275 more houses on the market we compared to the same week back in 2022. We had been seeing higher levels in the new listings market for the last handful of weeks, but this week we dropped below 2022 levels. So what gives? It's because last year, our Columbus Day weekend was on the week of October 9th. So in other words, we're comparing a holiday weekend this week to a non-holiday weekend last year. We listed 983 single family homes this week, which is compared to 1,016 this week last year. This means that we were 33 units, or 3.3% short. If we wanted to compare Columbus Day weekend to Columbus Day weekend, then we're actually looking at 983 newly listed houses this year compared to 925 last year. The four week rolling average is 1,202 units. Under agreements came in higher this week. Again, this is non holiday versus holiday data set. This week, we put 1,069 single family homes under agreement. This is 186 units, or 21.1% more than the same week last year when we put 883 houses under agreement. That four week rolling average, that's 1,031 units. So, when compared to last year's market, new listings were down by 3.3%, while under agreements were up by 21.1%. This pending to new listing ratio fell this week. The ratio of 90.3% is compared to the 95.5% that we saw this week last year. So what this means is that a little over 90% of all the properties that came on the market just two weeks ago went under agreement last week. There are 474 single family homes that closed this week for an average sales price of $834,000 and a median sales price of $630,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 128 units or 21.3%. There were 602 single family homes that sold last week last year for an average sales price of $764,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. But the closer you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory held steady at 1.81 months. 1.81 months this week is compared to the 1.53 months this week last year. And that gives us a gap uh, between this year and last year of 0.28 months. This was a pretty significant move from the 0.33 month gap that we'd been seeing in the last four months. In other words, the weaker market that we had been experiencing actually tightened up a bit and became a little stronger for sellers. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We now have 3,227 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there is 6% more inventory on the market today than just 28 days ago. We now have 653 more units on the market today than today last year. 395 more than compared to the inventory levels of 2022 and 237 more condos on the market than compared to 2021. New listings fell off a cliff, but as we've already said, that was thanks to Mr. Columbus. There are 383 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 576. Seven units. The 383 units listed was 100 units or 20.7% less than the 483 condos that came on the market this same week back in 2023. Again, the big disparity is thanks to comparing a holiday week to a non-holiday week. 
This week, we put 407 units under agreement. The 407 condo sales was 29 units, or 7.7% more than the 378 condos that we put under agreement this week last year. And four week rolling average for under agreements, that's 418 units. So 20.7% fewer listings came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 7.7% more condos. The condo pendings to new listing ratio continues to be level. And it's kind of an anemic level, by the way. This week's pending new listing ratio was 72.5%. This is compared to the 92.6% that we saw the same time last year. There were 213 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $743,000 and a median sales price of $540,000. The same week last year, there were 264 condos that sold for an average sales price of $650,000. So sales levels were down by 19.3%. Here's a stat that is really telling about the overall health of the condo market. Months of inventory increased to 2.59 months this week compared to the 2.57 months that we recorded last week. This is compared to the 2.07 months of inventory levels this week last year. And the year over year inventory level spread actually decreased to 2.52 months this week from last week's 0.6 months. This breaks a four week streak of a weakening condo market. Ain't you gonna be a huge favor? You hit that like button right down there, believe it or not. It just makes a huge difference to me as well as the channel. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. Well, subscribing if you're enjoying the content, then that one doesn't hurt either. So I appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. It's been a rough couple of weeks for interest rates. There's no hiding that. But let's keep things in perspective. Interest rates are down about 1% year over year. And let's keep in mind that interest rates are still at historical lows. But I'm going to say it again. Interest rates are not going to go down significant levels. I hate to break the bad news to the folks who are hoping and praying for rates to go into the fives. And I even heard people talk about interest rates in the fours. Idiots. I've said it before, but let's just do a real quick recap as to why inflation is caused by there being too much money in an economy that's chasing a limited amount of goods. In other words, from the government printing money and running huge deficits. Look, it doesn't matter which side of the political fence you're on. Both sides, they're talking about spending this and spending that and cutting taxes for tips and being Santa Claus, giving everyone this and then that. More spending and thereby more borrowing, or otherwise known as printing, money leads to higher inflation. Higher inflation leads to higher interest rate. The Fed screwed us. We just don't know it yet. They will eventually have to end up overcompensating and jack up rates even higher because they threw gas in a fire that was beginning to simmer out. They're idiots. And be on the lookout because the hurricanes will provide a little cover with some negative economic data in the short term. But then those areas devastated will all need to rebuild, which will create a surge in spending. Fun times ahead. Let's say it again. Gold and real estate are the best edges for high inflationary bites. But keep in mind that you can't live in a gold bar. Buy a house. Lock in your expenses. As the dollar continues to devalue, your fixed payment will become more and more affordable. When you talk about your own personal real estate needs again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.